floating in a Yellowstone National Park hot pool last summer has now been identified. America's first national park, Yellowstone National Park, was created in 1872. Visitors to Yellowstone have unrivaled opportunities to observe wildlife in an intact ecosystem, explore geothermal areas that contain roughly half the world's active geysers, and view geologic wonders such as the Grand Canyon or the Yellowstone River. So what gives Yellowstone its name? Why is the Yellowstone caldera referred to as the Yellowstone supervolcano? And how is the supervolcano doing right now? That's what we'll discover in today's video. Yellowstone National Park's Origins and Location The oldest artifacts discovered in Yellowstone date back more than 11,000 years, indicating that there's been a continuous human presence in the area from about 13,000 to 14,000 years ago. John Coulter, an American trapper and explorer, entered the Yellowstone region in 1807 and 1808 after joining and departing the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1806. He accomplished this first among people of European origin, midway through the 1860s when comparable proposals for the Californian Yosemite region were being discussed, the federal government was asked to consider protecting the Yellowstone region. But why was Yellowstone chosen as the name for the park? Contrary to popular belief, the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone's abundant rhyolite lavas, which have undergone chemical changes as a result of steam and hot water interactions to generate brilliant yellow and pink colors are different from where Yellowstone got its name. Instead, the Yellowstone River's banks in eastern Montana, many hundred miles downstream and northeast of the park, were given the name by Native Americans as early as 1805. The biggest concentration of hydrothermal features can be found in Yellowstone National Park, mostly in northwestern Wyoming, but also in southern Montana and eastern Idaho. The park was established as the nation's first national park by the U.S. Congress on March 1, 1872. It's also frequently referred to as the first national park in history. However, some naturalists and others have asserted that the Mongolian Bagd Khan Mountain National Park was created before Yellowstone. This started around 1778. In 1976, Yellowstone National Park received the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve designation, and in 1978, it was made a World Heritage Site. The park has a square shape with an uneven eastern border. It's 54 miles or 87 kilometers long from east to west at its widest point and 63 miles or 101 kilometers long from north to south. It has a total of 3,472 square miles, that's 8,992 square kilometers. Additionally, the National Forests of Gallatin to the west and north, Custer to the east, Shoshone to the east and north, Bridger Teton to the southeast and south, and Caribou Targhee encircle Yellowstone southwest. Mammoth Hot Springs, the park's northern entrance, is close to the headquarters. The Supervolcano in Yellowstone the supervolcano in Yellowstone last erupted over 70,000 years ago. Will it soon erupt once more? Keep watching to find out. Under Yellowstone National Park, a vast area of beautiful wilderness that receives over 3 million visitors a year, one of the largest volcanoes in the world is hidden. The Yellowstone Caldera, the volcano's cauldron-like basin at the summit, is a supervolcano according to the Natural History Museum in London, and it may erupt with a magnitude 8 eruption spewing more than 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material. To put that into perspective, the Natural History Museum notes that the Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines in 1991, which is thought to be the most powerful volcanic eruption in recent memory, was rated a 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, making it roughly 100 times smaller than the benchmark for a supervolcano. The Yellowstone volcano is about to erupt, according to media sources. They assert that the supervolcano will do so soon because it is yet to erupt in 70,000 years. However, that's not how volcanoes function. This is the most typical myth surrounding Yellowstone and more generally volcanoes. Volcanoes don't run on a schedule. They erupt when there's a sufficient eruptive magma below the surface and sufficient pressure to cause the magma to climb. Many volcanoes move through cycles of activity and inactivity, according to Poland. A volcano's activity is typically caused directly by the magma supply. Think Kilauea in Hawaii or Stromboli in Italy as volcanoes that erupt frequently but only do so because of steady supply of magma. 
So where does the idea that an eruption at Yellowstone is due come from? Earthquakes inspired the idea. When stress builds up on faults, which happens frequently, and at relatively steady rates because of plate motion, earthquakes occur. As a result, earthquakes may happen in relatively regular periods. It's more intricate than that, of course, and there are many more variables at work, but it makes more sense to say that an earthquake caused a fault. Although Yellowstone is not quite stable and has no great seismic activity, an eruption might have disastrous effects. Volcanologists are especially worried about wind-blown ash because it can cover an area of more than 500 miles or 800 kilometers broad with more than 4 inches or 10 centimeters of ash. According to experts, this will lead to the immediate loss of Midwest farmland and the choking of numerous waterways. Yellowstone's Physical Features Lakes and rivers in Yellowstone are also well known for their beauty. The largest lake in the park and the highest mountain lake of its size in North America, Yellowstone Lake, has a surface area of 132 square miles or 342 square kilometers and a height of 7,730 feet. That's 2,356 meters. Around 150,000 years ago, a comparatively small eruption in the caldera produced the West Thumb region, a knob-like protrusion of the lake on its western side. Southwest Yellowstone Lake in the caldera is where Shoshone Lake, the next lake in size, is situated. The Yellowstone River travels primarily northward, including through Yellowstone Lake, and exits the park close to its northwest border. It enters the park on the southeast corner. The beautiful cascade of Yellowstone Falls, which are found in the park's north-central area, include the Lower Falls, which lower 308 feet or 114 meters, and the Upper Falls, which drops 114 feet or 35 meters. The breathtaking Grand Canyon of Yellowstone comes to a close at the falls. The river carved a gorge that's up to 4,000 feet or 1,200 meters wide, 800 to 1,200 feet or 240 to 370 meters long, and 800 to 1,200 feet, again 240 to 370 meters deep. The rhyolite volcanic rock canyon walls are brightly colored in the red, pink, yellow, buff, lavender, and white and are built of decomposed rhyolite. The Snake River, which rises and flows along the southern border of the park before joining the Lewis River and flowing south, as well as the Gallatin and Madison Rivers, which rise and flow in the northwest of Yellowstone before leaving the park and eventually joining the Missouri River in southern Montana, are other noteworthy streams, along with the Jefferson River. Yellowstone's 10,000 hydrothermal features, nearly half of all known globally, are its principal attraction. Groundwater can infiltrate through the region's extensively cracked crust and into the magma where it interacts with it. Through steam vents, fumaroles, deep hot pools, mud cauldrons, paint pots, hot springs, terraces, hot rivers, and geysers, the mineral-rich superheated water then rises to the surface. The numerous cracks and crevices in the ground, which would otherwise become plugged with minerals precipitating out of the hot water as it cools, are thought to be kept open by the region's regular stream of mild earthquakes. Plant and Animal Life in Yellowstone Yellowstone has 1,350 varieties of blooming plants, roughly 1,150 of which are native. Lodgepole pines make up most of the tree growth in the park's four-fifths of its forest. White bark pine, which grows at higher elevations, particularly in the Absaricus, and Douglas firs, which grow at lower elevations, mainly in the north, are other conifer species found in the park. Cottonwood and willow trees flourish next to the streams, while aspen stands can be seen everywhere. Numerous wildflower species can be found flourishing in a variety of settings. In April, the earliest flowers bloom, and in September, the last. Common flowers include phlox, lupines, sink foils, larkspurs, and Indian paintbrushes. The fauna of Yellowstone is typically of the Rocky Mountain West. Outside of Alaska, the park boasts the country's most diverse collection of mammals, with over a dozen different species. Before they were spared from extinction at the turn of the 20th century, bison, also known as buffalo, were the largest mammals. Two subpopulations that spend the summer in the park's Hayden Valley, North Central, and Lamar Valley total several thousand people now northeast. Other large creatures frequently spotted in Yellowstone include elk, wapiti, mule deer, black bears, foxes, and coyotes. 
Smaller populations include brown or grizzly bears, bighorn sheep, pronghorns, mountain goats, and moose. Although their numbers are unclear, bobcats are believed to live throughout the park, and occasionally lynx and pumas have also been observed. Mountain lions. Smaller animals include badgers, martens, weasels, river otters, hares and rabbits, shrews, different types of bats, and numerous small rodents. In 1995, wolves were successfully reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park. Today, they are present all around the park. The number of beavers living along streams and lakes in the northwest, southeast, and southwest has increased significantly. More than 300 bird species have been found to reside year-round, seasonally, or migrate through Yellowstone in the spring and fall. About half of the total nests are there in the summer. Singing birds and woodpeckers have the most species. Among the year-round inhabitants are jays, chickadees, nuthatches, ravens, and waterfowl like trumpeter swans and Canada geese. Sandhill cranes, white pelicans, and common loons are among the summer breeders of interest. Yellowstone is one of the southernmost locations in North America for the latter group. Because of the area's chilly and mostly dry climate, Yellowstone is home to less than a dozen different species of reptiles and amphibians. Boreal chorus frogs, notable for their loud call during the breeding season, prairie rattlesnakes, the only poisonous species found in the park, and spotted tiger salamanders, which inhabit lakes and ponds devoid of fish. According to studies and analyses, the greater hazard is caused by hydrothermal activity, which occurs independently of volcanic activity. The analysis showed that Yellowstone's magma reservoir could reach the point where it could erupt and cause a super-eruption within decades, not centuries, as volcanologists had thought before. According to your thoughts, might the Yellowstone supervolcano erupt? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe.